Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Pope Francis began a new cycle of catechesis on St. Joseph at his weekly audience on Wednesday, explaining that today, as never before, in this time marked by a global crisis, St. Joseph can offer us support, consolation, and guidance. As the year of St. Joseph draws to a close, the Pope said he hoped his reflection might further help us to allow ourselves to be enlightened by his example and by his witness. The Holy Father set the stage for his teaching with a reflection on the biblical context of the life of St. Joseph. Recalling the figure of Joseph, the son of Jacob, in the Old Testament, Pope Francis noted that the name Joseph, Hebrew for May God Increase or May God Give Growth, is a wish, a blessing, based on trust in God's providence and referring especially to fertility and raising children. This, he said, reveals an essential aspect of Joseph's of Nazareth's personality. He is a man full of faith in God, in his providence. Pope Francis went on to consider the places associated with St. Joseph, especially Bethlehem and Nazareth, which assume an important role in our understanding of the saint. Bethlehem, he said, means house of bread or in Arabic, house of meat, both expressions that are full of significance in light of the Incarnation and the Eucharist. Bethlehem also recalls the story of Ruth, the great-grandmother of David, the king from whom Joseph traces his descent, as well as the prophecy of Micah, who foretold the coming of the Messiah from Bethlehem. While Jerusalem was the city loved by the Lord, the holy city, it was Bethlehem and Nazareth, both outlaying villages, far from the clamor of the news and the powers of the time that are most associated with St. Joseph. The choice of Bethlehem and Nazareth tells us that the periphery and marginality are preferred by God. Pope Francis said, Failure to take this fact seriously is equivalent to not taking seriously the gospel and the word of God. We shall continue the Pope's catechesis on St. Joseph next Sunday. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of the Vow, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linaw Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Protasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Willens Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Dison, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially this sponsoring group. Jose B. Ong and family, Ed Tombo and family. Thanksgiving intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, Carlos Tan and family, Salvador family, Palmeras Realty. Good health, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Lita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Henry and Lolita Evangelista, Nelio and Evelyn de la Peña. Birthday intentions, Jose Carino, Mirna Valderrama, Ching Bunguyan, Jade Gross, Vivian Cam, and Nene Villarica. Recovery and healing of Milagros, Denia, Emil Sison, Regina Cispedes, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Martin Castillo, Erlinda Aguilar. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, German, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro, Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto, Sr., Manuel, Reneño, Sr., Conrada, Adelaida, Leoncio, Damaso, Rosita, Lourdes, Floro, Linda, Abondia, Perez. And those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, 
God without end and almighty. Through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people. Deliver them from their sicknesses and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this last Sunday of the liturgical year, we are invited to renew our total allegiance to Jesus as our Lord and King. Today, we have also a new opportunity to realize the immense numbers, number of graces the Lord has granted us in the course of this liturgical year now ending. And as we call to mind these favors, we gladly express our most sincere gratitude for them. At the end of this Eucharistic celebration, we will renew the consecration of ourselves, our families, and the entire nation to Jesus, King of the Universe. The presider of this Mass is Father Michael Ondras Jr., Parochial Vicar, San Pedro Cathedral Parish, Davao City. The choir during this Mass is the Voces Marianas Pauline's, Pauline's Media Choir, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today, dear friends, we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus, King of the universe. Today, Jesus reveals to us God's kingdom, and God's kingdom is the reign of love. Jesus has shown us his greatest love, which mirrors the kingdom of God through his sacrificial offering of himself on the cross. In this Holy Mass, dear friends, we pray for God's grace, for God's strength, that we may participate through our share in the cross of Jesus and offer ourselves in loving service to our brothers and sisters. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
mercies of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Son of Man, to whom the Ancient One grants dominion, glory, and kingship, is a prophetic figure of the risen Christ. He is the one who will come at the end of time to proclaim his eternal kingship over the whole universe. The first reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming, coming on the clouds of heaven, when he reached the ancient one and was presented before him. The one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord. from the prologue of the book of Revelation describes what Jesus has done and still does for us. Out of sheer love, He has freed us from our sins and has made us a nation of priests. This is one of the reasons why He deserves to be our King. The second reading a reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness 
the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christus vincit, Christus reniat, Christus emperat. Christ has conquered, Christ now rules, Christ now reigns supreme. Dear friends, we all have an image or images of what a king is. And we usually think of a king as one who rules, who has a kingdom, has a throne, wields a scepter of power, and lives in a castle. He is protected and defended by his subjects. Now they bow to him, submit themselves to him, and fight to death for him. A king is known to possess all the riches of the world. He is rich and powerful and has authority over life and death over his subjects. 
For the Jews, dear friends, they have expressed very well their understanding on kingship, particularly the kingship of God and that of the Messiah, of the promised Messiah. And today's first reading, dear friends, from the book of Daniel, speaks of a vision, an apocalyptic vision. By the way, this was written no, originally intended for the Jews who were persecuted at the time. No? This was written to bolster their faith amidst the ongoing persecution or suffering. Yahweh, no? Yahweh, God's people, no? their God will assure, will definitely intervene, will rescue them from the present tribulation, and He will reign and vindicate them. The book, the book of Daniel no, describes the mysterious Son of Man. In his vision, we have heard, dear friends, no, Daniel saw God no, seated on a throne with millions of people serving Him. Into His presence, there came a human figure, and it is described as one like a Son of Man. To whom were given dominion, glory, and kingship, and all should serve him. His kingship, his kingship is one which shall never be destroyed. He would be king. He would be the king of kings and lord of glory, and his kingdom would last forever. And the New Testament, dear friends, proves proves that Jesus, who is prophetically revealed in the book of Daniel, is the long-awaited king of the Jews. He is the fulfillment of what had been spoken through the prophets in the scriptures. God will triumph. God will triumph. He will reign over the power of darkness and sin, just like the Son of Man, who was commissioned by the Ancient One, no, to receive dominion, power, glory, no, as mentioned in our first reading today. And the book of Revelation vividly describes Jesus no, as the fulfillment or it explains how the risen Christ will come amid the clouds as the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last of all things in his in its apocalyptic style, dear friends, the book of Revelation describes how Jesus has become our King by freeing us, by freeing us from our sins by the blood, by His blood, and so from the ruler of darkness, and by blessing all of us to be priests for God, all because He loves us. Today's first reading, or second reading, rather, second reading, dear friends, concludes by stating that Christ the King is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end of our lives and all living creatures. Giving Jesus no, the Alpha title reminds us of the first theme of John's Gospel, that Jesus is the Word of God, pre-existing with the Father before, before all creation. And through Jesus, dear friends, the plan of salvation brought, has brought us to its fulfillment, or the plan of sal salvation was brought into fulfillment. And to call Jesus as the Omega is to say that He will be in charge at the end of the world. That is why, dear friends, we should not be anxious despite the current pandemic. No, as so what uh, has been post posted here, no? fear not, I am always with you. Various Greek letters or Greek names of the mutated coronavirus, no? we have heard a lot from them, a lot from the health authorities. Various uh, letters were used, Greek letters were used. We have the kappa. No, the lambda and the delta, no, the highly contagious no, mutation of the virus. But let us not forget, dear friends, we have Jesus. No? We have Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of our life. 
we cast all our fears, our anxieties, for we are all in the hands of God. He continues to abide with us. We are not alone. And Jesus accompanies us in our journey of life until the end of time. The gospel which we often hear on Holy Week, on Good Friday in particular, is the event where Jesus was put into trial. He was crucified. Before he was crucified, he was presented to Pilate before the Sanhedrin. And he clarified before them, before Pilate, that his kingdom is different from this world. His kingdom does not belong here. Jesus' power, dear friends, is his merciful and redeeming love, overcoming sins and death. Jesus is the good shepherd who protects, defends, and dies for us. His will is not eternal condemnation, eternal damnation, but his will is to give us eternal life, to share with that divine life, and so he offered us his own very self, his own life for our salvation. His authority is to forgive and lead us back to the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. Dear friends, we see in Jesus, we see Jesus in the face of death and before a worldly power. Jesus remains serene and composed. He accepts the Father's plan for our salvation. And he takes everything in silence and in humble submission. He has lived what he has preached, which is, no, it is written in the scriptures. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as scripture says, Jesus said, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus did everything for all of us. His love is selfless, compassionate, no forgiving and unconditional. He is a king with a saving and liberating mission, freeing us from all types of bondage, enabling us to live peacefully and happily on earth, and above all, promising us an inheritance in the eternal life in heaven. The question for our reflection today, dear friends, who is that king who reigns in your heart? Is he the king whose love beyond all telling? Is he the king who is love, who, who, who in love, willing to give, no, to empty himself for his own people? Dear friends, Jesus asked us today to allow him to be our king. And we make, and when we make him our king or accept him as our king, we must declare our loyalty to him by the quality of our Christian commitment expressed in our serving of the last, the least, and the lost of society. Imitating Jesus, the serving the people, with sacrificial and forgiving love, and by our solidarity, being one with the poor. And when we imitate Jesus' way, when we imbibe Jesus' life, we make happen, we make present the reign of God's kingdom in our midst. And this is what Gerard Daring no, from St. Louis University, Center for Liturgy, beautifully explains to us he said, the kingdom of God is a space. It, it exists in every home where parents and children love each other. It exists in every region and country that cares for its weak and vulnerable. It exists in every parish that reaches out to the needy. The kingdom of God is a time. It happens whenever someone feeds a hungry person or shelters a homeless person or shows care 
to the neglected person. It happens whenever we overturn an unjust law or correct an injustice or avert a war. The kingdom of God happens whenever people join in the struggle to overcome poverty, to erase ignorance, and to pass on the faith. The kingdom of God is in the past, in the life and work of Jesus of Nazareth, but it is also in the present, in the work of the church, and in the efforts of many others to create a world full of love, full of goodness and justice. It is in the future, no. reaching its completion through Jesus in the age to come. The kingdom of God is a condition. Its symptoms are love, justice, and peace. Jesus Christ is King. We pray today, dear friends, that God may free the world to rejoice in His peace, to glory in His justice, and to live in His love. May we be kings ourselves, no, kings, quote-unquote, ourselves, to be kings in our own simple ways, imitating the love of Jesus who humbled Himself and become the servant of all. Amen. May God bless us all. And together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is the King of the universe. From Him all good things come. With confidence let us implore Him. In every prayer let our invocation be, Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ, our divine shepherd, gather your followers from every land into the one flock of the church you establish. Let us pray. Christ, our King, graciously hear us. Christ, our Savior, guide the Holy Father in his mission of healing the sick, seeking out the lost, and strengthening the weak. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ, judge of all human beings, place us at your right hand so that we may inherit the kingdom prepared for us from the beginning of the world. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ, first fruits of those who have fallen asleep in death, Bring all who have died, trusting in your mercy to the glory of the resurrection, 
especially the victims of COVID-19, the disease members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's media mission. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. In silence, let us also offer to God our personal and family's intentions. Lord Jesus, King of the universe, reign in our country, our communities, in our families. May everything we think, say, and do contribute to the realization of your plan of love. You live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes, Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the of all His As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son Himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that, by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with most, with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Romulo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him O god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as we is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And be with your spirit. As one God's family, with joy in our hearts, full of love, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we shall now pray the act of consecration to the King of Kings. Let this act of worship be a clear manifestation of our love for Him, who is our Lord and Savior and a treasured opportunity to recommit ourselves to be his loyal subjects and faithful followers. Act of dedication of the human race to Jesus Christ the King. Most sweet, Most sweet Jesus, Jesus, Redeemer, Redeemer of, of the human, human race, race, look down upon us, humbly prostrate, prostrate, before prostrate before you. We, we are, are yours, and yours we wish to be but to be more surely united with you. Behold, each one of us freely consecrates oneself today to your most sacred heart. Many indeed have never known you. Many too, despising your precepts, have rejected you. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to your sacred heart. 
Be King, O Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken you, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned you. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house, lest they die of wretchedness and hunger. Be King of those who are deceived by erroneous opinions, or whom this war keeps aloof, and call them back to the harbor of truth and the unity of faith, so that soon there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Grant, O Lord, to your church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give tranquility and order to all nations, and make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry. Praise to the divine heart that brought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever. Amen. That you might have life. Twelve Spiritual Practices In this very personal and helpful book, David has one of today's top liturgical composers. Holiness is the key to our search, and holiness begins when we realize that we are God's beloved children. Has offers 12 simple spiritual practices that can be taken in any order, individually or with a small group. This book, that you might have life is available at the Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, at 130 per copy. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Creatures of the sea, deep of your eyes to the wonders of the Lord, for the Lord of the earth, the master of the sea, has come with justice for the world. Break into song of the deeds of the Lord. Leap up your eyes to the wonders of 